my hand if you were not here okay. when I told the first part of the story. You were not here, okay? I know the story. You know it. Okay, so one or two people know it, So and we ask them not to spoil it, so please don't do that. And also, I know. I so everybody I, knows me. So I, that's fine, Abby. Also, I'd like you to keep making love. I want you to keep in mind that the way I tell a story, if you already know it, may be a little different from the way you've heard it before, because every time somebody tells a story, since we're not reading from a book, the words come out a little different. But I'm going to tell you the second part of the story, and then we're going to use what we know about making our minds powerful. And I'm going to give you some questions, and we're going to discuss some questions again, okay? So remember that while I'm telling the story, you want to listen actively. And then, when we get to talking, we'll talk about these things. But you want to listen actively and be thinking, okay? I told you last time that because I haven't done a lot of storytelling like this, I learned that as a storyteller, I can make little notes to myself to help me remember my story. Sometimes with little words, sometimes with little pictures. You don't really need to see them, but I'll share them with you for those of you who are curious, okay? Here we go. Yeah, for the people who are curious. Okay, we already did that one. And the, that's, that's fine. Okay, here we go. Let's move this out of the way. So, so we know that the Greeks went over to fight the Trojans because they wanted to get Helen back, right? Yeah. And they went there, and remember we talked about how they fought for a day, and then two days, and then three months, and then a year, and how many years all together? Ten years they were fighting all together. And what surprised them, Halan, is they thought, we're so strong, we have so many ships, we're going to go over, we're going to get Helen back right away, we'll be home tomorrow for dinner. Okay. But it took ten, 10 years. Hello. So after 10 years, because the Trojans were so tough, the Greeks got kind of tired. And they're like, you know what, this is 10 years, I miss my family, they were all boy male soldiers, we miss our wives, we miss our children. Maybe we should just go home. We're never going to win. And they were very disheartened. Well, they thought maybe we should give up. Well, one of the Greeks said, you know what? I have an idea. Let's not give up. And the name of the Greek who had an idea was Odysseus. Odysseus had an idea. So he gathered all of the top soldiers around him, and he whispered in there. And he told them the idea. Okay? Now, the next morning, when the Trojans woke up, remember, the Trojans live in a city with a wall around it, and every morning they would look up over the city walls, and they would see all the Greeks camped out there with their tents, and then if they looked past the Greeks, they could see the, uh, the sea, and they would see all the ships from all the Greeks. Well, on this next morning, the Trojans woke up, and they thought it was going to be another day to have war, but they looked out, there were no Greeks in tents. They looked into the sea, and there were no ships. They thought, I think the Greeks must have gone home. Maybe they gave up. They kept looking and looking, and what they saw in the distance was something that really surprised them. It was a strange object. They didn't know what it was, but they saw no Greek soldiers anywhere, no Greek ships, but far away they saw this strange object, and the strange object looked like it was coming towards them. So there were Greeks. They spotted a strange object, and the strange object was moving closer towards the city of Troy. They're like, this is really weird. We've never seen anything like this. We're going to get five of our best Trojan soldiers to go out and investigate. So the five, investigate, great word, is to, uh, to figure out what this strange thing is and why it is coming to our city. So the five best soldiers, the strongest, the smartest, went out. They went out of Troy. And they went towards this object. So now the people in Troy are going, this is really weird. I don't know what to do. The whole day passed, the soldiers never came back. The next morning, the people of Troy woke up. Once again, they looked out over the city walls. And when they looked out, there were no Greek soldiers. They looked to the sea, there were no Greek ships. They didn't see their five soldiers, but what they did see was this great, big, wooden horse outside. There's a big wooden horse. Imagine looking over your walls and seeing a big horse. Not like a regular size of a horse, but a giant, huge horse made out of wood. Ah, some of you... I know. Let's see. And 
And so, the Trojans engaged in speculation. Speculation is a fancy word. They were wondering, what is this horse doing here? What is it for? Well, some of the Greeks, well, some of the Trojans are like, it's a monster. Everybody's talking, right? Everybody's talking about this horse. It's so weird. It's never happened before. And some of them are going, it's a monster. It's going to attack us. We have to be careful. And some of them said, it's a gift from the gods. The gods are giving us a gift for being so strong. Because at that time, although, Angelica, many people today believe in just one god, the Greeks believed there were many gods. So they thought, oh, the gods are giving us a gift for fighting so strong for ten years. And some people said, no, no, it's not a gift. It's a trap. The Greeks are making a trap for us. We have to be careful. Well, and the, Greek, the priests thought, no, no, it's a gift from the gods. We think it's a gift from the gods. <laughs> well, there, there was a king, Priam, and he didn't know what to do. He said, should I listen to the people who think it's a monster? Should I listen to the gods who think that it's uh, the priests who think it's a gift from the gods? Should I listen to the soldiers who think it's a trap? I don't know what to do. Well, he went to the priest and he said, priest, what should we do? And the priest said, it's a gift from the gods. And we need to take it inside because otherwise the gods are going to be mad that we are not taking their gift and they might destroy our whole city. So the king, King Priam, he decides, I'm going to do what the priests recommend and we're going to take the horse inside. So they opened up the city gates and they took the horse inside. Now, so they were saying, this is a gift from the gods. We've been fighting war for 10 years. It's finally over. We need to celebrate. So they had music, and they danced, and they sang, and they were celebrating that the war was over, and they were celebrating that they got this great, beautiful wooden horse from the gods. And not only did they sing and dance and laugh, but they also drank a little bit of wine. And so they had to eventually... They got a little super happy, but after celebrating for the whole day, they all just fell asleep because they were so tired. And the city of Troy was perfectly quiet. But inside the horse, where it was quiet before, there started to be some little noises because inside the horse were ten of the very best Greek soldiers. And in fact, on the belly of the horse, there was a trap door. And when all the, the uh, people of Troy were sleeping, the Greeks opened the trap door. And they went down this little rope. They went down this little rope. And they got out and now they're in the city of Troy. Well, there's only ten of them. They can't possibly crap, capture everybody in Troy. But guess what? During the night, all those Greeks that left the camp area and all those ships that sailed away, they came back in the night. And they were all the day just outside the camp. So there were ten weeks, they kind of tiptoed over all the sleeping Trojans, they went to the city gates, they opened the city gates, and in came all the Greek soldiers. And it did not take the Greek soldiers very long to capture all of the Trojans and tie them up. And do you know what else they did? Oh, they didn't kill them. What? They got Helen. No, they got Helen. Because they just wanted to get Helen. So they danced, they drank, they never did the horse. Chapter with the rope. Oh, I'm on my third page ready. So, three more. They captured the children. Oh, so they got Helen, and Odysseus, the man who had the idea, of course, everybody thought he was a hero. So they were so excited because they had come to get Helen, they got Helen. All the Greeks were very happy. They left the Trojans all tied up. They went back to their ships. They all got on their ships and they started to sail back to the Well, the Trojans haven't woken up yet, and you'll hear about that in the next story. And you'll also hear about what happened to the Greeks on their way home. But today we're going to pause the story. And I have a question to ask you. We're going to keep this in mind. Remember we said, how can you guys look up here and help me out, Angelica, too? So we talked about how can we make our minds more powerful, and can we have the girls read the orange and the boys in a powerful voice read the purple, and the girls in a powerful voice read the orange, and when you're not reading, you're listening actively. Okay, ready, girls, here we go. Listen actively, read actively, think before you speak.
going to do is we're going to think. And then we're going to have a chance to speak. And the question is, thinking about this story and about life, do, don't answer out loud because you're just thinking. Do you think, is it ever okay for a group of people to fight or to go into war against another group of people? Yes. Don't answer out loud. If you think it is okay, you want to make your thoughts and mind stronger by thinking, why do you think that way? If you think it's never okay, you want to make your mind stronger by thinking about your reasons. So we're going to look at the clock. We'll take one minute, and everybody's going to think what they think about this and why they think that way. Okay? So first of all, sometimes when we have discussions, people change their minds. So in a minute, I'm going to ask, Okay. Okay. Um, 
question is for you. If we decide it is okay to have more sometimes, let's pretend that we decide it's okay to have more sometimes. Should there be rules for each side to follow during a war? Why or why not? So, okay, not allowed because you don't want to get free. So, you can look at the clock. I'm going to ask as you're saying out loud. I don't want you to stop other people's thinking you want to honor that. Look at the clock. We're going to take a minute to think. Do you think there should be some rules? And why should there be some rules? Or why should there be no rules?
quiet and a quiet person to talk. And if you notice both times that he invited Sydney to talk, Sydney had really good ideas. So you don't want to miss out on the ideas just because someone's kind of doesn't really have ideas. Okay? So a really good job and had that discussion. I noticed that David one time was like, now I agree with, and also Joey, you changed your mind too, didn't you? So what made you change your mind? What did somebody say to make you change your mind? change it there and that and how about you? You change me, maybe you change your mind. So do you think there should be rules or no rules now? So I think there should be rules. Because what made you change your mind?